Good morning, everybody. I'm just gonna wait and let a few people join me. Okay, so today we are going to be looking at making a Kumahimo bracelet. So I have all the materials here. Um, the good thing about these videos is that you can watch it now if you're watching now. If not, you can come in at any point and just start watching it on the um, jewellery page, the home jewellery school page. But the other thing is, is that I'm posting them up onto my um, Facebook page as well. OK, I'm going to get started. So I'm Amy Sermon at the Oxford Bead Shop. And um, this is my third, I think, um, live video for you. And today we're going to look at a Kumahimo bracelet or a Kumahimo braid. So what we're going to do is we're going to make something like this. All right. So I'm going to show you, talk to you about the materials, what we need in terms of length of cord and the type of cord that we're going to use. Talk to you about how to do it, how to use the tools that are needed and then how to finish it off at the end as well. All right. OK, so to get started then. First, what we need materials wise is all we really need for the first step to make the braid. Uh, and what I've used for this particular size is um, some two mil satin rat tail. And I've got four lots of one meter. So I've got two lots of a meter in the blue and two lots of a meter in the white. This has been very specifically chosen because one of my little boys absolutely loves frozen so this is his frozen bracelet okay so let's get all the ends together i'll probably have to make another one for the other one but he's not really into disney princesses like uh, like the other one is okay so what i've done there i've got both ends together and then i found the middle point now in that middle point i'm then going to tie a little piece of cord now, everything that I've got here and everything that I'm showing you, you can buy from us at the Oxford Bead Shop. Let's just tie that in a little knot there. Oh, I can hear one of my little boys outside. <laughs> you might be able to hear him too, who knows? Okay, so uh, I've tied that in the middle. So as I was saying, you can get um, everything from us and we're going to offer them in little kits like this where you get all the cord that you need and you can choose the two different colours. So I'm going to show you that later and then all of the uh, findings that you need for the projects as well. So for that, it's four pounds, okay? But I'll talk about that at the end of the session. All right, now what we're going to do, this is the board that we're going to use. These come in two different sizes. So you can have the, the larger board, which we've got here, and these are £4.50, or you've got the small one here, which is £4. Makes no difference to what you make, it's just what you prefer to hold. To be honest, adult hand size, either is absolutely fine. And in fact, in the kits that we sell, we provide the smaller ones. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that into the middle of the board there. And then I'm going to put the two blue. Can you see the dots for each side? So I'm going to put those two blue ones in the top there. And then I'm going to get those white ones out of the way. And then I'm going to put the other two blue ones in the opposite side around those dots. And make sure that that's sitting in the middle. So I'm like that. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the white on opposite sides as well like that so we've got the two blues there two whites there and that point there is the middle of your two meter uh, the, your, the middle of your meter so each of these should be 50 centimeters the guide is whatever you're wanting to make lengthwise ultimately the ultimate length of the piece you need to have your cord three times the length. So we're making a bracelet about 15, 17 centimetres, something like that. So we're going to be working on about 50 centimetres because this does stretch a little bit. All right, now, it all looks a bit complicated, but believe me, it's really simple. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the top 
and because this is foam you have to really kind of pull it out a bit and also the other thing that I do can you see how I've got my thumb there to stop it from pulling up as I pull this bit out but what should I do I'm going to pull that out of there Oop, I need to move a bit let's see whether we can do this and pull it down to the bottom and pull it out of the bottom and up to the top and turn so top to the bottom bottom to the top always and turn always on the same side so this chord on which is my right but I think you're seeing everything the other way around this one which is on the right is coming down to the bottom on the right and the one on the left at the bottom is going up to the one on the left at the top okay and then we turn it doesn't matter which way you turn it and where you start as long as you're consistent so as long as you're consistent with it I think that if you start, see how I just pull those so they don't get too knotted? They don't get too knotted anyway, because these are quite nice and silky. Um, if you, what was I saying then? Yeah, so if, I think, if you change direction sometimes when you're doing this, I think the pattern changes, because you see the pattern that we're making? See how it's twisting round? So I think if you then start going in the opposite direction, you end up creating kind of more like a chevron sort of pattern. Not tried it. So if you try it, let me know and post it up on the page. I should try it. I've been making these for years. So there we go. Top, uh, bottom to the top, sorry. And then turn. So you see what I'm doing? That up to the top, bottom up to there and turn. That to there, that to there always on the same side my nieces whose birthday is today happy birthday grace and isabel five years old um they do these and actually i'm going to i hope they're not watching but i'm going to pop one in their little kit so they've got their own board to play with as well that i've got them as their present i don't know why i'm whispering that <laughs> i don't know why i'm whispering okay so there we go i'm just going to keep doing that so we keep going, keep going, and there you can see it all starting to come through the bottom there. Can you see that? So you just keep going with that. And once you get into the swing of it, actually, it's um, it doesn't take too long at all. It's probably a good 30 minutes, I would say, to make the bracelet. Now, if I were to put that down, go and do all the things that we have to go and do, feed the dogs or sort the children out or make a cup of tea and I come or get a glass of wine, come back. And I need to look now, where do I start? So I can't remember which one I did last. So what I would do is I'd have a little look at it. And then if you have a look where, which chord is on the top, that's the, the we want to start on the other. So you see here, I can't see because of all your lovely um, messages that are coming up. Um, so here, can you see how the white is on the top here and here? So I'm going to start on the blue. Now, it doesn't matter which side, because it really, we're doing the same. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to take that one, and I know that I started there. So you see, if I were to pick it up like that, the blue's on the top, so I know I need to work on the white next, all right? Now, the other thing to do, and what's really important is, probably not quite at this point, but as you start working through this, make sure you're pulling it. So you're pulling it, you're, you're gripping it at the top there, like that, and you're pulling this down because it stretches once you've made your whole piece up to the length that you want then you can give it a really good tug so let's go back a step sorry we're going to keep doing that so I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you today you can just take your time doing that it's really nice to do good good in front of the tv stuff um, so then once I finished, I would take all those four pieces out. I'll just show you cause I can start this again. There, Jack. <laughs> okay. So then I would hold my braid and then literally just knot everything together. Like so make one big knot like that in the end. All right. So there's my braid and one big knot in the end. So then I've got my two ends in true blue Peter style like that. So I've got one nice neat end there and then I've got one end here with the knot and I'm going to really tug it. 
because what could happen is if you if you finish it you make it into your bracelet you cut the ends you stick everything on you stick all your findings and everything on and then as you're wearing it it will stretch so obviously then it'll be too big so make sure you really stretch it out before you um finish it off okay so next step on there is to glue the ends so that's the other bit of kit that you need is some glue um we've got this e6000 um that we have uh i haven't got many left in the shop actually and i can't order any more of this but we have another brand of glue which is called zap glue really really strong stuff um that's all you need you just want a nice strong industrial strength glue for it and then these are the findings that we're going to use. So what's important with this type of uh, project is knowing what you're going to achieve width-wise or thickness-wise with the cord that you've chosen to use. I'm going to touch on other cords and other materials that you can use, but with this one, with this two mil um, satin cord, you will make a six mil braid. So the thickness of this is six mil. So then you buy end caps see these little end caps little tubes that have got little tiny you see those little tiny loops on the end they're called end caps and they are six mil um wide six mil inner diameter what would be called the inner diameter that's inside there and look that fits on there perfectly can you see that all right so what we can do with this is we would take some glue let's open this up And then what I tend to do is you want to do this end first because you'll want that to dry before you put the ends on. So if you go all the way, you need to measure it as well. I've, stick, I've, I've skipped a step. Let me just put that down. Look, it's all coming out. Let me just get rid of that. Stick the lid back on quick. We talk about sizing. Sorry about that. I'm skipping a step. Right, sizing then. Let's pop that around my wrist. Now... That's way bigger, really. Can you see that? That's kind of way bigger than what I need um, because there's a little bit of an overlap there. Really, what we're aiming for is to have it just under touching, so about here, just under touching because by the time we put all the clasp on, it adds that much length to it. So be careful of that when you're... Um, cutting it so make sure that you're getting it just right and I would always check it at the last go before um, I end up cutting and sticking the last side on okay right now first then let's take this open again so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this end out because this end's fine we can just literally put some glue on there and stick the end cap on but this end you want to glue first so I'm going to run the glue around there at the right point which I know because I've just measured it remember so just go around get it all in between the cord so it's a nice solid piece like so and then we let that dry there we go so there we go I don't know if you can see that but you can see that I put the glue on there all right all around that point so then I would let that dry completely then I can cut it off through that point and it means that it's not going to unravel so imagine if I were to cut like try and glue it cut it stick the end on it's all going to start coming undone so um, yeah so then I would cut through there and then I can put the end on so I'm going to let that dry now so I'm just going to pop that off to one side um, the way that I put the end caps on then is rather than putting the glue, let's show you on the other end, rather than putting the glue onto the actual braid, I'm going to put the glue into the end cap. It's a nice neat way of doing it. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue there on the end, put it inside and then cut it off with the side and then it gets a nice neat little bit inside there. That's it, just cut it off on the side and then stick the lid back on there. And then we can just put that on like so there we go nice and neat so once that ends dry we cut through it we put a little bit of glue in our other end cap and we stick it on that end okay right let's show you how to put the clasps on let's pop that there so i don't get anything sticking to my table okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take these off to show you how to put them on 
Should have prepped that first, shouldn't I? All right, there we go. Okay. Let me just take those ones off. All right, so for this, you can use any clasps that you like. The ones that we put into our little kits are toggles. We like these toggles. They're great. Um, so a little hoop and a bar. And then you'll get two little jump rings, tiny little jump rings. Can you see those on the on the mat there? Um, and then you get obviously you get your two end caps as well. So that's what it will look like once all the ends are glued and all the end caps are on. Nice and neat. OK, so we will need a couple of pairs of pliers for this, really. So I'm using a pair of flat nose pliers, which are these ones. So they're completely flat and then a pair of chain nose. So again, completely flat and coming down to a, a point there. What we will do is we'll take our jump rings and we twist it open. Now, when you open and close a jump ring, what's really important is that you twist oh, is that you twist it open like this. People think that when you open a jump ring, you open it like that. Well, that's, you would think you'd do it like that, but actually what you have to do is you have to twist them open because then when you pull it back into position, you've not lost its shape. Also, the other reason for doing that is as you're twisting metal, it's work hardening down here. So it means that as you're doing that, it's getting harder here. So when it's in position, it sh it's less likely to move. You created a bit more strength in it at the bottom there. Overdo it, mind, and you could break it. So that's what we do. So we want to twist it open. So I've twisted that open. I'm going to pop that on there. Pop that on there like that. And then we grip the other side and we twist it up. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I've opened that one up already. Pop it onto there. Put my hoop on and then twist it up, and that's it. There we go, Kumihimo bracelet, eight braid bracelet, all right? We sell in the shop kits like this that you can purchase, which has got everything in, makes really nice presents, easy to go through the post, we can post it directly to somebody for you if you wanted to buy it as a present to somebody, they're £12.50. Now with these, it's got everything in there, it's got your glue, it's got full written instructions, your cord, you can choose from four different colours, I'm going to show you that in a minute, and then it's got your little board in there as well. The four colours that those come in, winter, which are the two blues, spring, which are the two greens, uh, summer, which are the purple and the pink, and then autumn, which is that lovely teal and that mustardy colour. So they're the four different colours. So all of this is on a previous uh, Facebook post that I've done. So once you've mastered that, you can do all sorts of other things with it. You can use a variety of different materials. So I've got here, this one has been made using a plastic bag, an old style Asda bag, I think it was. You know, like the old uh, sort of more flimsy ones, not the bags for life. You could try bags for life, you could try anything. So what I did with this is I opened out the bag so I had as much length as I could, cut it into strips, and then just started to work with it. And it worked really, really well. So it's really good. You know, you can use any material. You could use wool, you could use ribbon, you could use absolutely anything, embroidery threads, all sorts of different things. And depending on what you use will depend on the ultimate size that you'll create. So this one has come out and you see it's much smaller compared to this one. Um, and that's a four mil size as opposed to the six. So you can really use all sorts of different materials. Then, using the same format with the eight braid, you can then start adding beads. So I'm going to do a tutorial in this because I think you'd all find this really interesting. It looks like it's almost crocheted, bead crocheted together, but it's really lovely. I think it'd look nice as a necklace, that one as well, a big long one. So I'm going to do that later on um, in the month at some point. I've got to do my programme for next week today, so you'll know what we're up to next week. So that's another thing that you can do with the eight braid is add beads. And then another thing that you can do is you can start to work with different cord quantities. One of the ones that I've tried is the um, 12 braid, which is here. And can you see how that one, see that? It sort of has this heavier, chunky 
line around the edge there. So that's really nice and that works like this. I'm not going to show it you today. I'm going to do this as another tutorial in its own right. So, But you can see there we've got 12 braids as opposed to the eight. The other thing that you can do if you want to jazz them up a bit is you can put kind of charms and things like that on the bottom. All right. So that's how you work with a Kumahimo. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you wanted to have a go, you can buy the boards for four pounds and then you could use materials that you've got at home. We sell all the findings separately in the shop if you wanted to buy bigger pack sizes. But if you wanted to just have a go, you could buy um, some a, a, a pack for four pounds, which has got your cord and your findings in and then a board and you can make up a bracelet. You know you've got everything there apart from the glue to make up a bracelet. We've got loads of different colours. That's just some of the ones that I've bought to my home studio, uh, but I've got loads more. I am making trips to my shop. I'm keeping it to a minimum, obviously, because of everything that's happening, but I am making sh uh, trips there. So if you wanted to do a virtual shopping trip, then you can um, let me know. I'm going there actually tomorrow and I can take you around the shop. You can choose the things that you want. You kind of have sort of a 20 minute slot, I would say. I'm already doing it with somebody else tomorrow. Um, and then I can show you things and you can choose colors and I can get it all packed off to you. Uh, shipping options are on the page or on my um, Facebook page. And yeah, so we can still get materials moving around the country and get everybody making. Thanks for watching. And uh, what am I doing on Saturday? So we're back on Saturday and I'm talking about beads and knotting. So if you wanted to have a little look at that, again, it'll be 10.30 and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Um, if you've got any requests as well, if you've got any requests, things that you want to see, I'm doing little short tutorials online that I can post out that people will like to see. I'm going to show one about making a pair of earrings using metal clay. Um, but also, if you wanted to do any tu tuition, I've been doing tuition via Skype, FaceTime, WhatsApp, and it's working really well. So if there's anything that you're stuck with at home that you need to get on with um, and you need some tuition, then we can offer you that as well. Just send me a message on here or you can email me at info at Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.